Hello, I'm Amy Saxton. So I've been here 10 years working with Dr. Cheney pretty much the entire time. Brief stint at the front desk and with uh, being the referral coordinator for a while, but mostly all contact lenses, Dr. Cheney's lead technician. Um, I took over the specialty contact lens fits. I started training on probably about seven, nine years ago and then probably took over about seven years ago doing all of the specialty contact lens fits. So I am still learning all the time learning. This course is really meant to be, I mean really a contact lens one on one. We're trying to help all the technicians who might find themselves in an optometrist clinic at some point in tech pool with an optometrist in the flow so that you're comfortable and functional as a workup technician. So. The other courses that I've said I would do are specific to insertion and removals, especially with some of the, the harder contacts that we work with, and then one on model vision and multifocals, and then actually how do you do a new fit oh, you can come through. with contact lenses, a new like soft contact lens fit, and then how do you do a specialty contact lens fit, and then a troubleshooting one. So I've put a lot on the board out there for what classes I'll do. Um, so they should be coming, so keep an eye on it if you're interested in more. If you have questions, go ahead and ask anything. If I think it's something that's more relevant to one of those classes, I'll say, you know what, that's going to be covered in this class. But if I have time at the end of this class or if you want to come find me this afternoon, I'll answer any questions. So, okay. Welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. So the first thing I want to talk about with contacts are the different modalities of contacts and why we have each of them, kind of pros and cons. So first, we have the soft contacts. The soft contacts can be a daily wear lens where you wear it during the day, take it out at night, pitch it, next day fresh lens. <coughs> two week lens where you wear it during the day, preferably take it out at night. You get two weeks of wear time out of it and then you pitch it and then the month long lens. There's a three month lens and there are still some annual soft contact lenses. So the benefits of a soft contact, relatively easy to get in and out, relatively inexpensive, um, comfort's fantastic. They do really well in a dry climate. They do really well with people who have allergy issues and stuff. Um, there are ones that are approved for sleeping in, a very easy care regimen. So lots of pros to the contacts. The one con to a soft contact is going to be the optics aren't as good as a hard contact lens. Optics and a hard always going to be a little bit better. But otherwise, the soft contacts, very, very good. So the reason why you would want to present the soft contact to the majority of the patients that you have is just it's a lot easier for them. It's easier to replace because they get a set at a time. They don't have to wait for a specialty contact to get made. So usually when we have a new patient in clinic who's like going to be new to contacts, unless they have some kind of corneal disease, they're going to go into a soft contact lens. And what I usually do is I'm trying to find out from the patient what's their lifestyle like. If they're a kid from the parent, what are their hygiene habits like? <laughs> do they have dry eye and allergy issues? If they've got a history of dry eye, bad allergy issues, or a very active outdoor lifestyle, I'm pushing that daily hard <laughs> to say, this is going to be your best bet because whether you swim in it, you shower in it, whatever you do through the course of the day, at the end of the day, you're tossing it, you're putting a, a new one in the next day. So I'm going to try to push the dailies. And we have some that are extremely cost effective now. You can get a year supply of the BioTrue daily after the rebate, $270. So it's $470 up front, $200 rebate for 2018. They can get it $270. So pretty cost effective for most people. But if they you know, don't have an active outdoor lifestyle, don't have dry eye, don't have allergy issues, not really interested in spending the money for the daily, they want something else, then fine. Two week is good, monthly is good. Not a huge cost difference between a two week and a monthly. A year supply of the two week lens, our go-to lens is the Oasis, 220 versus 190 for a year supply of the Biofinity, which is kind of a go-to monthly lens. So I usually talk to the patient and just say, you know, daily's best, two week and monthly, still really good. If they're gonna sleep in the contact, 
There's a couple that are approved for sleeping in. There's one that is specifically designed for it called the night and day. <laughs> so you can get an idea from a patient what their lifestyle is, put all those comments in there, and know what the expectation with that patient is so that the doctor has a good idea of which direction to go. So soft contacts, they can come in just a plain spherical prescription. They can come in a toric prescription. They can come in a multifocal prescription. The multifocal and the torix are, for the most part, limited parameter prescriptions. There are specialty contacts where you can get multiple parameters. I mean, there's just pretty much any option under the sun is available in them. They're going to cost more. <laughs> so, but the mass-produced ones that we stock for trials and that we get free trials of and everything, those ones are going to be limited parameters. So that's another benefit to the other modalities of contacts. So next we've got the rigid gas perms. We've been doing rigid gas perms for like 70 years. <laughs> they are great optic-wise, very easy to get in and out, very easy, straightforward care regimen. Can't sugarcoat the comfort. They're a longer build-up time to get used to them. It usually takes a couple of weeks for patients to adjust to the hard contact. And where with a soft contact, our ideal is to have the patient not even aware the lens is in. That hard contact, even if you can tolerate it and the comfort's good, you're still pretty much always aware that that rigid gas perms in there. So comfort, not awesome, but we can get a very good prescription for people with a lot of astigmatism, people with keratoconus, ectasia, post-LASIK, people who've had RK, cornea transplants, the more challenging patients, their vision's gonna be much, much better with a hard contact lens than with the soft. We can get do torx in RGPs, there's a couple of different ways to do a astigmatism lens if the spherical equivalent isn't getting us the best vision that we can get. We can do multifocals with them. We can actually do a lined bifocal and trifocal with an RGP, something you can't do with the soft contact lenses. So a lot of options with RGPs. <laughs> and then from the RGPs, we've got the Synergize. That's the hybrid lens. So it's a hard contact lens in the center, soft contact lens skirt. The diameter of it is 14.5 for all of them, 14.5, which is the standard diameter of any toric soft contact lens. So it's the same size. However, it has to be inserted and removed in a very specific way. It has to be filled with solution. You want to keep as much solution in the contact as you can when you're putting it in. So the patient has to be bent over, going like this, bouncing it on the finger with solution, putting it up. And they're getting it out a little trickier than a soft contact because you have to be underneath the RGP center of it to pinch and pull it out. They don't come in toric options. They do come in multifocal options. So if you have somebody coming in in a hybrid and you're checking the prescription, you're doing an overfract, it's always a sphere on the overfract. There's no point in checking the cell in excess. Can't get it. <laughs> so all you end up doing is showing a patient, oh, that's really good. That's perfect. Can I get that? No. So sphere only over effects on the Synergize no torus. The sclera lenses are the really big rigid gas permeable materials. So where a gas perm is a diameter smaller than the cornea, which standard cornea is say 12 millimeters, a gas perm is going to have a smaller diameter than that. A scleral <laughs> sits out on the sclera, hence the name. Optics are great. We can do it sphere only. We can do it as a torque. We can do it as a multifocal. Getting it in and out, it's a lot like the Synergize. You have to fill it with solution, have them lean over, put it in. It only comes out with a plunger. So we have plungers. I'm sure you guys have all probably worked with plungers before. And inserters. One thing with inserters, if you go into a room and you see an inserter that looks like this and you're going to have a patient put in their sclera or you're going to put it in for them, do yourself a favor and clip off the end opening it up so there's an air passage through, helps it to not suction to the contact. When they're like this, it doesn't always happen, but it has happened that it just suctions right on. So you go up to put it in and then you try to, the, you're getting the suction effect on the eye, which isn't pleasant for the patient. So do yourself a favor if you have one, they come like this from the manufacturer, just take scissors and snip the end of it so that you've got that opening through. So, and then plungers and for those of you who came before, I said, I am doing a class on insertion and removals, so where people get to practice actually putting them in on themselves and on each other so that you have a little bit more uh, sympathy for what the patient's experiencing. 
Um, plungers, RGP is super easy. You just put it right on the RGP and take it out. A scleral, this plunger has to be really on the edge of the sclera. So this is a scleral lens. Have you guys all seen one before? Okay, so I'm going to let you pass it around. <laughs> There's a little bit of hummus so, in it. Right, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a rigid gas perm okay. material. It's just super large. Comfort with them with them is very good. Vision's usually very good. The downsize to the downside to the sterile is that they can fog up. For some people, when you put pressure out on that sclera, the body interprets it as like a foreign body, and so it tries to flush it out of the eye. All of a sudden, you get this kind of really strong lipid layer tear trying to flush the foreign body out of the eye. It doesn't ever adjust or accommodate to having the scleral lens in. So the person will put it in, and after a period of five minutes to maybe even three hours, their eye starts to fog over. They get all this clouding, and you can see it inside. It's debris inside the lens, so they come in. I say, come in, you know, at the end of the day, don't take your scleral contact out so that you can see how it looks. And you look in there and you see all this debris and clouding floating inside the contact. So when we see that, we can try a few different things to adjust the fit to hopefully make the body stop having that response. But a lot of times we have to tell them that the sclerals aren't for them. They can either live with it, but they're gonna have to take it out several times a day, clean it, put it back in, or we have to switch to a different contact. So that's a big, thing that can happen with this lens. The other thing that can happen is because it sits out on the sclera, it can put pressure on the trabricular meshwork, which can increase the interocular pressure. So I think, uh, I don't remember if it was Dr. Marsky who calls it squishy scleral syndrome, <laughs> but um, Dr. Cheney in particular is a big fan of always checking pressures of any scleral lens patient every time they come in just to make sure that that's good. To get a scleral out, I'm gonna show you this. This is really important. The plunger needs to be at the very edge of the contact if the plunger goes on the center of the contact and you try to take it out, the contact's not going to come out and they're going to have a very, you're suctioning my eyeball out of my head feeling. And you can't get the plunger off at that point. So you have to take the plunger, twist it, slowly come down off the edge of it and then get it off. So just stay calm. No more trying to get it out. <laughs> just slowly just start twisting that on. <laughs> on off of there, but you want to get as close to the edge to where the plunger is completely on the edge where you can just lift the contact up off the eye. So, so that's a really quick rundown of the different types of modalities. You got the hybrid, you got the RGP, the scleral, and then the soft contact lenses. The hybrid, it's got the comfort of the soft, great optics of the RGP, it's a little bit more involved getting it in and out, but comfort's, comfort's pretty good. So most people with the scleral and the hybrid, if the vision's great and the comfort's good, well then they don't care how much more complicated it is to get it in and out. They're, they're after those great optics and comfort they can live with. So the next thing is cleaning the contacts. There are different materials for the different types of contacts. So really quick, easy check. When you're in a room, if you don't know what's what, on the bottle it's going to say four soft contact lenses <laughs> or four rigid gas perm lenses. You do not want to use a rigid gas perm solution on a soft contact lens. The molecular makeup of the lens is much different and it will ruin the integrity of the lens. You can use soft contact lens solution on a rigid gas perm. It will not do any harm. However, it doesn't have the same moisture content for the gas perm as the ones for the gas perm have. But soft contact lens solution, okay for any contact, okay? The one I'm gonna tell you about is BioTrue. So when you ask the patient, oh, what solution are you using? If they say, oh, it's the one in the clear bottle, that's BioTrue. <laughs> BioTrue is manufactured by Bausch & Lomb. So Bausch & Lomb makes contacts. And they make solution, which is true. I mean, Cooper Vision makes their own solution, and uh, that's fine. No problem with that. But each contact is patented with their own makeup. So they're all silicone hydrogel contacts these days. And the technology that comprises how much of whatever material each one uses is very 
um, specific to that manufacturer. So Bosch and Lam has a specific material that they use to manufacture their contacts. BioTrue works great with that material. When it came out, all the studies on it, on how great it was, it could go up against the uh, effectiveness of the hydrogen peroxide cleaners as far as getting things disinfected and cleaned up to everybody, huge hype over BioTrue. So we started getting it to everybody. Use this, this is great, this is great. About six months later, we started having a bunch of people in Cooper Vision lenses come in with fogging, hazing, discomfort, irritation with their contacts that they had never had before. Turns out the BioTrue doesn't work well with the molecular makeup of the Cooper Vision lens, especially the BioFinity. Some people can use it and do fine, but if you have somebody who's in a Cooper Vision BioFinity and you find out they're using BioTrue, make a little flag of that, ask them any hazing, any fogging, any discomfort, irritation. If all those answers are no, that's fine, but we might give them a sample of Revital Lens or Pure Moist before they leave. We went back to BioTrue and talked to them, and Bosch and Lama came back and said, yes, that is true, there's a problem, no, 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 it's going to be best for our lenses, so why don't you take those patients out of the Cooper Vision lens and put them in the Bosch and Lama lens and have them continue to use BioTrue? And we're not going to do that. So that's just a little side note. BioTrue and BioFinity, not always a good match. Clear Care is the hydrogen peroxide cleaner. So it has a bright red cap on it. And all of you should know that anything with a bright red cap with the contact lens solution means that does not go in the patient's eye at all. There's a big red label right up here that also says this does not go in the patient's eye. Clear Care is a hydrogen peroxide. So when it's used, it has to be used in the case that comes with it. You don't use it in a standard contact lens case this case, and in particular, this little disc right here is what neutralizes the hydrogen peroxide. So the vial has these cages. They're marked with an L and an R, where the patient will put their contact in. They'll fill the vial up to here with the clear care, put this in. It will bubble and foam. Sometimes it foams and <laughs> overflows. Then they just have to wait for it to finish its reaction, open it, add a little bit more in so that the contacts stay completely submerged put it back down in there. Once it's in here for six hours, it's a sterile saline. It can go directly in the eye. It's completely, completely safe. Any less than six hours, it can't go in the eye. So I tell patients, if you have six hours or more, put it in. It can be after six days. It doesn't matter, but a minimum of six hours. If they don't, then use one of the other solutions with a regular case. But clear care is especially effective for people who have allergies and dry eye issues, who tend to get buildup on their contacts. This really helps with the longevity of the lens. It can be used on hybrids, sclerals, RGBs, and soft contacts. It's safe for all of it, and it's a great, great cleaner. So if you have somebody who's coming in, oh, they've got buildup on their lens, their one-month contact is only lasting them three weeks, and then they want out of it, they want to scratch their eyes out, but they don't want to go to a two-week or a daily lens. No, I'll just stay with these. Okay. What solution are they using? If they're not using clear care, this is something that could help the longevity of that lens make it through the month. So if a doctor says, you know what, we're going to start you on clear care, it is not uncommon for that doctor to say, and Curtis is going to tell you how to use it and leave the room. <laughs> so knowing how to use clear care is pretty important because that happens quite a bit. Oh, Curtis will review clear care with you. So you want to make sure you take it out, explain everything, explain that it has to be in this one. I've got patients that come in all the time. I left it in, it was in there for 10 hours. I don't understand, it burned my eye when I put it in. I'm like, did you put it in the vial? No. Okay. So very important that they're educated that it has to be in this vial. <laughs> okay. For hard contact lenses, those solutions are going to say rigid gas perm. There's basically two different systems. There's an all-in-one system, which is very much like the soft contact lens solution. It disinfects, cleans, conditions, everything. You can store it in it. It can go straight into the eye, perfectly safe. So that's the, the one step, one and done. The other one is the two step, where you're gonna have a more abrasive cleaner. So the main ones that we use are Boston and ESC, Optimum ESC, which we don't have samples of right now, but you have the red cap. So just like the clear care, the red cap is there to tell you this is not safe for the eye. And then the cool thing, both this one and Optimum, wait for it. <laughs> There's another one too that ABT is making now. 
When you take the cap off, it's red there too. So it's a really good, stop. <laughs> that one doesn't go in the eye. So this one, you would clean the contact. You just take the, the contact, put it in the palm of your hand, squirt some solution on it. Digital rub, always up and down, back and forth, T-motion. And when patients are given an insertion and removal training, they're told this T-motion, never circular motion. Circular motion, especially with an abrasive cleaner over time, can actually warp and change the contact. It can change the prescription. So always T-motion, gentle inside and outside of the contact, and then rinsed with cool water. If it's a gas permeable, always, always cool water, never warm water. Water never goes on soft contacts at all. It'll destroy the molecular integrity of the soft contact. But on a gas perm, whether it's a scleral, or just a regular standard hard contact. Cool water on that, rinse it off really well. If you're in clinic and the doctor asks you to clean the contact up real quick or do something, or if you're gonna do a fitting, when you use the cleaner on the lens to disinfect the lens, make sure you have rinsed your hands really, really well. Just holding the contact under the cool water, and then all of a sudden you hold it in this hand again and you didn't rinse the cleaner off there, it's a it's gonna burn their eye. <laughs> so make sure you get all of the cleaner off of your hands before you handle the cleaned contact and get ready to put it in. And then the blue cap in this one is just a conditioner. Optimum, the one that has the other red cap cleaner, also has a conditioner that you actually store the contact in. This doesn't get rinsed off. Go straight in. So that is a very, very quick rundown of the types of contacts that we have and the types of solutions that go with them. If you're ever in doubt of anything, just step out and ask one of the other techs or the doctor that's there, um, what, what do I use, what do I do? <laughs> so, um, the contact lens appointments that we do, we do contact lens completes, where we're, the optometrist is just doing everything all in one shot. Then you have contact lens annuals. Contact lens annual is when somebody is seeing an MD for the complete. So we get patients who are followed by retina all the time and they're doing everything except the MR and the contact lens prescription. So they come in for the contact lens annual. We're not gonna dilate, we're not gonna go through all that. They just saw retina two weeks ago, they're seeing retina again in two months. They handle that part of it. We're just doing the MR of the contacts. And that's it, so that's the annual. Um, or kid just had his complete with Dr. Arnold and said, oh, I want contacts. And Dr. Arnold said, oh, I don't do contacts. Let's get you over with Dr. Marcy. He'll do the contact lens. So that's a contact lens annual. They've either had their complete already and they're just coming for the contacts or they've had dilations and other care with glaucoma or retina and we're just really doing the manifest and the contact lens prescription. A contact lens follow-up can be short or long. If it's short, it means they've had their complete or contact lens annual within the last 90 days and it's a no charge exam and they're usually a very straightforward contact, usually supposed to be. Um, and it's just vision and over effect, seeing what's going on. If there's something to troubleshoot, the optometrist will do that. And contact lens long follow-up is supposed to be for patients who are graft, post RK, keratoconus, ectasia post LASIK, something more challenging in the contact lens. In both cases, all you're doing as the workup tech is vision and over effect. <laughs> that's, that's the majority of what you're doing, vision and over effect on all of them. So I'm going to go into a couple of things as the workup tech. I was saying that I usually have the, um, the conference room. I have a whiteboard and I have a projector where I can put things up <laughs> so people can see everything. Uh, I don't have that today. So you have to bear with me. But this, we're going to say you go into EHR and you're on the contact lens evaluation page. right? When you first open into that page, it's going to look like this at the top versus having the, the fields that you can populate for a contact lens prescription. So. You guys should all be pretty familiar with that at this point. If you click on here, previous contact lens where yes, then those fields show up at the top so that you can put in the contact lens prescription. So now you've got your options there. Now this is really important. In these fields down here, you can see the contact lens things that we've tried. Some of them are finalized prescriptions, some are just trials that we've tried. You should not be looking at these boxes to figure out what prescription to put up here. That's a hard no. 
and I'll tell you why. Say patient Joe comes in and he's wearing a minus six spear RGP. And Curtis gets a plus 50, I'm not picking on you, you're just the first person okay. there. So <laughs> Curtis gets a plus 50 over refract. So the doctor comes in and says, okay, so if we did that plus 50, we'll go 550, everything else is gonna stay the same on the RGP. But he talks to the patient, Joe says, you know what, I'm fine in these, not getting any headaches, not having any problems, no, I like these, these are good. And so the scribe saves it down, but we're not actually ordering that contact, but it would show right there. So say this was 2013. So patient's in a minus six from 2012. 2013, we get a plus 50 order effect, so we put the prescriptions in 550. But they don't want to order it, so it just stays in there. So then the next year they come in, and the tech, Travis, you get to be the next, <laughs> Travis looks down and says, oh, 550. So he puts 550 up there, and he gets a plus a quarter over a fract. And the doctor says, oh, we can do that. So take it down to like a 525. The patient says, no, I'm still good in these. I'm not having problems. Do they look okay? And the doctor says, yeah, they look okay. You can stay in these. Next year, he comes in. <laughs> you see where this is going? Now, 525 gets put up there because it was that's what was right here. And you get a plus quarter over refract. And he says, yeah, you know what? I'm ready to buy him this. So now you order a five. Well, the problem is he's still in a minus six. <laughs> so he comes in with the five saying, I can't see anything. And the doctor's like, well, did they make them right? Go, go verify. They're, no, they're made right. I don't, I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> yeah, well, the problem is he last ordered 2012 off of minus six, and we had a plus a quarter over effect off of minus six contact. So that's a big reason why you can't look in these boxes here and pull that prescription into those lenses, or into these here. Also, it happens with soft contacts all the time. Patient Joe is in a minus five sphere in the one eye and a minus two in the other, monovision. And he thinks, oh, maybe he'll do a distance prescription. So next time it's a minus five and a minus four, but it's saved down. But we say, okay, to order mono or distance, older, new prescription. And he calls in, he's like, no, I like my monovision, I'll go with that one. Well, it's in there, it's okayed, but it didn't actually get put in here. But it said okay in there, so the people in the contact lens room would just authorize that minus five and minus two, just like it was. But here he comes next year, and it's minus five, minus one, and the tech's like getting this weird over effect going, why can't you see in the distance? I don't know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so again, you can't go off these boxes, okay? I harp on it a lot because this was a lot of years of heartache going, I don't understand why we're getting this weird over refraction. <laughs> so, okay, so what do you do? You look over at the history side over here, and you're looking for this, a contact lens order. And you click on that. So you're looking for the last contact lens order right over on that side. <laughs> so then you're going to look up here and see what was ordered. Sometimes you will see that it's populated in both the right and the left eye, but it'll say single lens OS. Well, great. Now you know what the most recent left eye was, but you got to keep looking back for single lens OD <laughs> to find that one. So make sure you're going back to what actually ordered. So that's step one of it. Step two is I bring Curtis back for his appointment. I say, okay, it looks like the last order of contacts were in 2009. Is that what you have in right now? Because sometimes you'll be like, no, I lost those like two months ago. I'm wearing my wife's. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good call. It's happened. <laughs> I've got my sister's lenses in. I, no, I don't know. Well, I'm wearing the left one from that visit and the right one from like three years ago. I don't know. And so, you, okay. So, but, so the first step is looking back to what we last ordered. The second step is actually confirming with the patient, is this what you have in right now? Sometimes you won't see a contact lens order. If they're in soft contact lenses, especially, and they order through like 1-800-CONTACTS, what you're going to see is a patient communication at some point, and it'll see, you know how like when we um, print the glasses prescription, it shows up RX like that? You'll see a contact lens RX like that in a patient communication. So that means 1-800-CONTACTS called us and said, hey, we want to verify this is a valid prescription, and they are supposed to print the contact lens prescription and fax that to 1-800-CONTACTS or Costco or Sam's Club or whoever is asking for the verification so that they have written confirmation not only of the prescription but of the expiration.